Interesting point. We haven't... In the previous two zones, we saw what the beast was. Uh, what the boss was. You know, the the frog actively was... Oh, uh, hold up. We gotta check something. Is there a, a shortcut thing? Maybe, maybe not yet. I just remember there's a grappling hook point to skip some of this, but I guess it's over there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so we're close. Um, but with the frog and the witch, they talk to us. They had more of a character to them. I guess that was weird. What the hell was that? That was rude. It was way rude. Okay. Uh, anyway, yeah, the frog and the witch would talk to us, but the beast hasn't even shown its uh, fur nor fang. Not a big deal, but it's kind of one of those where it's like, I actually like that characterization. Like, I don't know. I don't necessarily need every character to be kind of a meme, but it's really satisfying kind of having that personal connection to a boss fight beforehand. It's why, uh, I mean, not at all in the same vein, but... Let's see, not in the same vein, but for the Final Fantasy series, I don't remember, like, half of the villains that I fought in the various Final Fantasy games, but I remember that Creepy Octopus and Kafka in 6, like, I remember them vividly. And then also, oh gosh, uh, Seymour Guado in Final Fantasy X because he was real freaking creepy all the time. Hmm. Where am I supposed to be going here, actually? I didn't miss anything, did I? I don't think so. Uh, but, you know, having those those villains that you kind of forge that connection to it goes a long way to... Yeah, because this, this is... Oh, wait, no, no, no. This just opened this gate. We're supposed to go this way. And that's a way back. Here we go. I know where I'm going. Uh, yeah, having that personal connection means a lot when it comes to, like making a boss worth fighting. I and mean, sometimes you can just have, like, really impressive boss fights. Well, that was awkward. It rolled right into his hands. <sighs> there we go. I love using the grappling hook in combat. I'd actually say this is probably the best grappling hook I've ever used from, like, a combat perspective. It's so snappy. Ow. And I think I'm in invincible while I'm moving. Using it. I could be wrong, but it certainly feels that way. Oop. Kind of go? It's awkward. I should probably slow my roll just a bit. But I'm rolling too damn hard. Let's grab that. Okay, so that opens those. Unfortunately, the Healy Flower uh, I cannot reuse. But we got a shortcut, so it doesn't really matter too much. As long as I don't have to redo anything. That's, that's the one that always gets me, is redoing stuff after I die. It's just like... Pfft. I don't want to deal with it. This looks like a right proper doorway fight, ain't it? Well,
right proper doorway fight it is. Okay. Okay, that flag is kind of a problem. Okay. Get them out of here. The charge hits while on the ice. I actually would play a whole game like this, frankly. Where you can slide around. Like, that would be really cool. That would be really cool. Alright, how much longer do we have? Okay, so we've got our... Artillery. I've got two HP left. Okay, there goes one. There goes two. Flawless. Ah. Yeah, my skill goes up when I'm actually <laughs> trying. I I like that. I like the fact that I can actually casual through much of this game. Um you know that it's it's not actually so hard that I feel uh punished constantly. You know, Sekiro, Fury especially. Boy, Fury. Fury is top of the list for games that are just like, oh man, you made a mistake. Time to redo everything. And I'm like, uh... I think the easy mode had, like, mid-boss checkpoints, which was nice. It was actually, like, really nice. This is it! That's the beast! Oh boy, my heart is pounding! Are you gonna fight it? I'm gonna stay well out of the way and, uh, take notes from my song. Good luck! Well, anything else? What the hell is this thing? I have no idea. Anyway, what is Beast? Oh. Betty. Okay. First and foremost, I'm going to die. Ow. Ow. No, didn't hit me. That, that hit me. Yeah, pancake. Okay, so I think I'm going to have to take this one a lot slower. We might want to actually just do big, big greatsword charges. What is the damage on the greatsword? Not actually that much better than the hammer. Oh. You know, here's the other thing we should do. I should probably actually up a stat. I want to still max out strength, but I think I'm going to leave that for later. Okay, so I want to haste, no, dexterity. I'll just get that. Probably should have just saved up for haste, but if we're in, a, in the middle of a boss, well, not in the middle of a boss fight. You know, if we're in boss fight territory, it's probably a good idea to just take what I can get.
Okay, that hits me. So I think this is going to be a little bit more of like a tit-for-tat situation. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Grappling hook doesn't work out for me. Ugh. We'll see how this goes. This is going to be, this could be a toughie. I think I got the pattern. Nope. Not when they roll. Okay. I... I... I'm rolling. Out of the way, but it doesn't matter. I, I don't like that roll. I am the one who rolls. Okay. I might have to... Come on. Yeah, the problem with the roll is when it pops up to do the roll, it auto-tracks to where I am. Which makes the fight kind of tough. So effectively, it pops up pointing one direction, I roll to behind it, and it just lands on me and goes the direction that I was, was trying to hide. answer is, oddly enough, I have to be in front of it. It's just so big. It's so big. I realize I'm getting greedy with some of these hits, but it's just, that hitbox is really hard to roll out of. I... Probably should have invested way harder in haste. I think dexterity was maybe a mistake. Yeah, this might have to be a boss that I just don't talk much during. I apologize. On the plus side, it seems to do its rolls in threes. One. Two. Three. I don't have to speed run every boss fight. One, two, three.
frustrating. One. Two. Three. Okay. At this point, I got it? It did not look nearly that damaged. Honestly, this is why I like boss health bars. It makes it a little easier to tell how close I am. Yeah, I got the process down really just as long as I was going for more hit and run as opposed to trying to really get up in there in the thick of it. It wasn't so bad. I think I just keep expecting uh, the roll to work as well as it does in like a Souls game, but it's more for getting out of the way. We gather here today to mourn the passing of Betty. To some, she was revered as a god, to others feared as a wild, untamable beast, and to a small few, loved as radiant beauty. After many lifetimes lived atop the mountain, supplying locals with fur and untimely deaths, she can now rest. Bow your head in remembrance. Pay your last respects. Her time in this world is over. 700 schmeckles for that. Damn! What an incredible adventure this has been, full of twists and turns. So Betty and the Beast were one and the same. Amazing. That means the drunken guy, the stranded sailor, was he in love with the Beast? Whoa. I kind of feel bad for them both now. Dead or heartbroken, which do you think is worth worse? They're both kind of tragic. Still, it's great material for a song, huh? I'm going to start writing straight away. Once it's ready, come by the stranded sailor sometime and I'll play it for you. I'll get to work on my new masterpiece straight away. Come by the Stranded Sailor. Another demonic soul's anger quelled, Reaper. May they find peace in death. Ready. All right. So now what? We've got all three of them. We can't be done. I mean, I've got a lot of collectibles left. But I bet a lot of those are in secrets that I didn't even have access to until recently. Okay, nope, we've already seen that one. Yeah, I'm not gonna up my magic. I don't need to. Because it is Lost Cemetery. Because I could, I could do some completionism, but I... We are still missing whatever that portal move is. Um, is this the right direction? I think so. Because we want to go up here. I'm kind of going the wrong way. Oh, well. There's also six or like eight things that go there. You've certainly been keeping me busy. However, it's nice to have something to focus on. Sending the dead on their journey may seem like a depressing task. But it gives me a sense of purpose. Okay, now that's where we want to go. Still curious about those portals. They got to do something. It seems about right. So here's the question. Do we get screwed? Or do we get foiled? Or do we succeed, but what's on the other side ain't great? You did it. You're much stronger Reaper than I. I could have never taken down those giant souls alone. It's time at long last. Let us force this door open, fledgling, and finish our assignments. Now, to the other side. It 
This is it. This is the place beyond, where no life is to be seen. Uh, hello? Who is it? Oh. Oh, hello. It's got a fanny pack. Death. Are you death? I thought the tales of the original Reaper were just the mad ramblings of the three crows. Yeah, well, guess that's me. If you didn't know I was real, that means you're not here to rescue me, huh? I... No, I'm sorry. We're here for another purpose. In fact, you might be able to help us. Wow, rude. But all right, I mean, what's a few more minutes after several centuries? Why are you here? Actually, how did you even get here? We seek souls that have passed through death's... your door. We're service-bound reapers. We require those souls to finish our tasks and restore our stature within the commission, otherwise we will die. Oh. Awkward. If you're looking for a soul here, then you're out of luck. Any non-corporeal souls that pass through the door are absorbed into the ether. Soul energy has to be recycled to create new life. That's why my job was so important. Not that the living didn't hate me for it. I used to go around reaping souls myself, and then pick them up and take them beyond the veil. But it was so depressing. Not for the souls, they don't care, but for the living ones they left behind. I wish I could let them know dying isn't scary, it's just the cycle of life. Thing is, over the vastness of time, I got very tired of that cycle. But then one day, a strange being came to me with a proposition. This being could create portals, doors to any place or world. They offered to outsource the collection of souls to an automated system using one of their doors. While it was open, it would draw in the souls of the dead. A lighthouse on the shores of the ether, if you will. In return for this, they asked for their lives to be extended. Well, actually, they asked for immortality, immortality, but that's impossible. If souls stick around too long past their exp expiration date, then with nothing left to tie them to mortality, they decay into demonic forms. All life must end. Well, eventually. So while I kicked back, several generations of these self-proclaimed Lords of Doors came and went, enjoying their unnaturally long lives, each one agreeing in the end to submit to the limitations of life and go willingly into the ether. Until one didn't. Which brings us to your current Lord of Doors. Towards the end of what should have been their lifespan, your Lord betrayed our long-standing agreement. They said there had been some kind of incident that the door had malfunctioned and needed to be remade anew. With a door to be reconstructed, it would require the touch of death to link the door to the ether. But after this new door was created and opened, the Lord kicked me inside and sealed it shut. No way for me to escape, no way for stray so souls to pass on to the ether, no death among the living. I've been here, alone, ever since. But my assigned soul, it must be here. It has to be here. I tracked it to this door. It must have entered here somehow. Are you sure you haven't seen it? Sorry, guy, but if a soul comes in here without a body, it disappears into the ether. Sooner or later, everything that begins has to end. So, there's no hope? It must still be here somewhere. No! No, 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 no! I wasted so many years searching for that soul. Decades! Centuries! I refuse to die! Uh-oh. I sense you're a little bit past your best before date. The Grey Crow. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Ow. Rude. Ow. Mega rude?
Okay. Dang it. I love this boss arena, though. It's so perfect. Ow. need a little bit more range. Ow. Okay, so he does contact damage. Again. Yep. I know I should be hitting those crows into the into him. Well, that's new. The hell is that? Oh, it's a it's a black hole. I might just want to wait for him to roar. I really wish those would come in. I'm so shit at reflecting shots back at enemies. Oop, and I'm dead. Okay, I'm also not sure what those birds do. This is a tough fight. Well, I guess we'll have to uh, try again on the next episode. So I'll see you then. And as always, thanks for watching.